On this week's episode of Science and Star Wars... That is so Luke. Robotic limbs. Hey there, and welcome to Science and Star Wars, where we explore how close real-world science has come to our favorite Star Wars technology. I'm Anthony Carboni, and joining me over on the wall... Hello, my name is Watson. Brag, brag, brag. Today we're looking at something that is very real and helping people every day. Robotic limbs. Of course, if you're a character in Star Wars, there is a pretty good chance at some point you're gonna lose a limb. <laughs> right, Watson? Yes, through the eight Star Wars movies at least nine characters have lost a hand or arm including Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker. Just a lot of arms flying everywhere. But the good news is, most of these characters get robot limbs that are just as good or even better than before. And we're getting ever closer to that reality. But instead of helping Jedi a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, they're helping people here today. New robotic limbs are changing people's lives for the better. Scientists have developed mind-controlled limbs that use signals from the brain to open and close individual fingers and do complex tasks that would have been impossible a few decades ago. This technology has also been used to give people extra limbs that can pick up objects and interact with the environment. And it's not just a one-way brain connection. Some new cutting-edge prosthetics feature sensors that deliver actual feeling to the brain. And while it's not perfect yet, some users have said it's close to natural. This field is growing and changing every day, and the developments researchers are bringing at facilities like UCSF's Orthopedic Institute could soon improve your life. Currently, the clinic is more on the local level. We want to open this up to a national stage to really allow people from all over who sort of are in a similar position that want to be able to do these activities that never have been given the resources to do so. Open Bionics is working on 3D printed robotic limbs that can be tailored to users' specific needs. They're even making Marvel and Star Wars themed limbs for younger users. So there's a lot of progress being made with robotic limbs. Here in our lab, we have a voice-controlled robotic arm operated with Watson APIs, which makes me happy because we can finally high-five, buddy! Give me a high-five! Nailed it. And while that is cool, let me show you something really cool. Quickly, to the Centennial State! You are bolted to the table, so you can't come. I'm here with Easton LaChapelle. Easton, you built your first robotic hand at the age of 14, and now you are changing the world. Yeah, this is the very first robotic hand I made. It was made out of electrical tubing and fishing line, and over the next couple of years, I started advancing my design uh, to produce something that's a little bit more functional. And I met this seven-year-old girl who had a prosthetic limb that had cost $80,000. So how much does this cost? About $150. Wow. Okay, so what does the most recent version of this look like? <laughs> this is a prosthetic that we made for a 10-year-old girl, and what we did is we 3D scanned her left arm, we mirror that, design all the mechanical pieces into that, and then 3D print it. And it's very similar to how our fingers work. There's yeah. two tendons, one that actually pulls and moves the finger and closes it, and then one that returns the finger. And you can see that in the form of the full hand. Oh my gosh, it's, that is so a, Luke. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look as crazy complicated on the inside as I imagined it would. Right, by, by keeping it simple, it allows us to put some really amazing features into this, such as force feedback, which allows us to monitor how much force is being exerted on an object. So you can pick up really simple objects, like maybe like a pen or a pencil, or really delicate objects like an egg. How do I connect it and use it? How does yep. somebody do that? We mainly use muscles. With this little girl, we actually hook up these little electrodes to her. These electrodes measure voltage changes in your muscles. And uh, when she flexes, it's able to open and close the hand. Okay, I wanna know what it's like for somebody to put it on and try it for the first time. Can I do it? Absolutely. We're gonna put these three electrodes on your muscles. Cool, I'm right. ready. Move your arm up and that will trigger your form. And now if you do it again, it will now open. <laughs> you just controlled a robotic hand with your muscles. That's so crazy. I have an idea. Let's see who can stack the blocks the fastest. Okay, you're on. Go. Oh, number one. 
Good job. That was awesome. Easton La Chapelle, thank you very much, man. It was so amazing to actually try this, and I'm so excited to see where you go with this in the next couple years. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you did great. And Thanks. the great thing is that all of this is just the beginning. So amazing. And remember, for more science and more videos, check out ibm.com slash Star Wars.